Good morning everyone. Today is the first Sunday for the month of August. We're already on the third month for the new ecclesiastical year. You won't notice it's already bear, no? Okay, August, yeah, September, and later we will not be noticing our greetings will be Merry Christmas. Bilis ng panahon. Thank you, Lit. Let me extend our warm greetings to all those who are here for our 10 a.m. worship service on site and those who are joining our worship service and are not just watching online. Uh, shout out sa inyo dia while you are joining us online and those who are here extending also not just our greetings but the grace of God for all who are worshiping today. We have with us some uh, guests and visitors and dito sa atin kasama Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Susima Nabor. May we request Ma'am Susima to please stand in the family. Where are they? There, there. Yes, welcome po. Uh -huh. And then we also have with us Reverend Araceli Hinoso Cruz from United Metropolis Conference of Quezon City. There. Kasama ni Manang Jom, magka, magkatabi sila. Oh, oh. Welcome. At tandito rin kasama natin si Ate Jean Espino from Dumaguete. Actually, she was once our financial secretary of the church sometimes in the 90s work here, worship here, and now is back for stay for a week. Nako, may bakasyon si Ate Jean. Let's not just welcome them, but let's welcome all of us as we sing our welcome song. There's a welcome here, there's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah, there's a welcome here. There's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. As I have said earlier, this is the first Sunday for the month of August. We have just finished our month celebration for rural life. And we will enter into a mission month celebration. With that, we continue with our theme focused and inspired by the 33 positions in Christ or 33 positional truth in Christ. Tatapos na po natin ang 16 positional truth. They are enumerated and provided for us in the Chime Bells. For this week, we will be focusing on the secure, secure position in Christ. At uh, we'll, this will be discussed by our preacher today and hopefully we'll be able to, yes, of course, understand with, the, with God providing us wisdom. We're happy to announce to the congregation that our Roof the Roof um, collection has reached 2M already and we are glad for how the Lord have provided families and have extended of course our our faithfulness through the roof the roof collections again that is a fund of the church that we're using to um, uh, for our own project in the church it's an in-house borrowing now, let's go to the schedule for the whole month of August. Today is Communion and Mission Sunday, our 10th Sunday after Pentecost with Pastor Edith as our preacher for 10 o'clock, and our worship leader, Dr. Neil Purakan, who is also, ako nang unahan, our birthday celebrator for the day. Yan, mamaya ka na namin kantahan. <laughs> Um, next Sunday is Evangelism Sunday, 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Our mission evangelism team will take charge of that with Pastor Jay as our preacher. 
Outreach Sunday will be on August 20. Again, that will be a very challenging Sunday also and exciting because I think that's also kadayawan. Medyo busy, maingay, at uh, fun ang Davao. So, we'll be expecting plural parade on that Sunday also while our outreaches will be joining us on the same Sunday to worship here. That's August 20, Outreach Workers Sunday. Then, followed by our 55th Foundation uh, Anniversary Sunday of Social Concerns, and that's also the first Sunday or in the Kingdom Tide. By the way, in relation to that, let me inform the congregation, we just sent off our um, medical, surgical medical team of the social concern the other day. Oh no, kahapon pala. They are on a surgical mission in Hulu until Thursday and will be back by Friday. And um, with the team is Dr. Libre ang nandun sa kanilang kasama. So let's include them in our prayers that as the team goes on a surgical mission, God will be with them in this mission. Sabi pa ng isang member ng team na pumunta ngayon, words sometimes is necessary to be preached and proclaimed about the love of God, but action speaks louder than words. And so we do mission in the name of Christ, to glorify Christ. I told the doctor, may you do it in his name that you are blessed in this mission. Wow. So let's include them in our prayers. Na pagbalik nila, they will be giving us a praise report. Nakasakay sila sa C-130 kahapon. We're thankful for some flower offering from the family of the Abasolo for the uh, dedication of Sifina Rose Fuente Mamayang 3.30 in the afternoon. Now, for the schedules of the equipping in the church that is already established uh, regular routine as it is uh, available on the screen, but uh, let me emphasize instead our schedule for equipping for this week, particularly the vacation church school for outreaches. This is available on Facebook of the church. 8 o'clock in the morning on August 7 to 9 will be Buhangin in the afternoon, New Carmen area in at 4 to 6 in the evening, the Los Amigos Mission Point money ang mga BCS centers natin for August 7 to 9. Then followed by August 10 to 12 in the morning for um, Tibar, Bocana area and Punta Dumalag in the afternoon. We're still uh, arranging the schedule for Bangkirohan BCS. Another equipping schedule is our prolegomena. What is that, Pastor? That is teacher's training, and we're launching this as our laying of the foundation for the associate degree in biblical studies. The congregation should know that we successfully have laid the foundation already for the diploma degree in biblical studies. And that, that comprises eight subjects with 30 hours per subject. And we successfully did that last year. This month, we'll begin the associate program. And uh, for those who would like to know, this is our way of answering, uh, especially equipping our local lay workers, the homegrown. We, we call them homegrown, or shall we call them ministry multipliers so we will be equipping them this time with the associate program and uh, prolegomena is a teacher's training addressing our particularly for those who finished diploma degree by the following month we will offer diploma degree for everyone who are interested that's next month schedule will be published by the following month. 
Um, additional announcements. I'd like you, I'd like to call your attention to the slides on the stewardship and care service. Please look at it and uh, with that, I'd like to offer everyone, let's offer a clap offering for the Lord's glory. Makita natin how faithful God is. He never changes. The challenge is for us who have been blessed also to extend such faithfulness of the Lord in our stewardship, in our giving, and our tithe. Shall we offer a clap offering for the Lord? Yes. Amen. Amen to that. Let's proceed with the prayer request. We have some brothers and sisters whose names are listed in our prayer request for healing, but uh, we'd like to put special focus on praying for Elder Rector who is still admitted at Brockenshire. And we also have uh, Elder um, Magpayo who was just discharged and recently we received an information that the mother of Elder Charity is also admitted as is at his PMC. Let's include them in our prayer concern, especially for healing. Extending prayers and greetings to those members of the church who are celebrating birthdays today and this week and those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. Their names are printed on our chambers, requesting them to please stand so the congregation will know who are our celebrators for the week including wedding anniversary celebrators. Let's request Doc Nail to stand as well together with all those who are celebrating this week as we greet them with our birthday greeting song and wedding anniversary greeting song. Once again has come your birthday Once again the time is here what a loving gift from Jesus He has given you one more year. Happy time, your birthday. Happy time is here. What a loving gift from Jesus He has given you one more year. Sweeter as the years go by. Sweeter as the years go by, richer, fuller, deeper. Sweeter as the years go by. May the Lord continue to bless our brothers and sisters who are celebrating certain victories in their life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me take advantage of this moment before we proceed with the choral intro. This is a concern of prayer inviting the whole congregation to include this, praying particularly for this. We remember that this church filed a, a, a question, a query in the civil court after going through a process provided in within the halls of United Church. We were asking regarding the irregularities and the um, illegal amendments that was done in the Constitution and bylaws of the Church. Sometime in 2015, and we filed the question in the civil court after exhausting all the process within the Church sometime in the 19, uh, 2018 or 2019. And the case has now progressed the first hearing will be on Tuesday in the civil court. So this is inviting everyone to include in our prayers, especially as we search for the answer and the resolution on the constitution and bylaws that was illegally amended in 2015. So, alas sa Tuesday, is the first hearing on such a question filed in the civil court. Let us prepare ourselves for the worship of our powerful, wonderful, loving God 
as we hear the choir with the introit. Those who are able, please stand. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, who destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, who has forgiven our sins according to the riches of his glory, grace. And has made known to us the mystery of his will. This is our God. Let us worship him together. Let us sing our hymn of praise or worship the King. Let us pray. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, the source of all knowledge and wisdom, we give thanks to you today for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for all your provisions and divine protection. 
for the good health and the abundant blessings you bestowed upon us. In these difficult times, O Lord, we submit ourselves to you, both our strengths and weaknesses, as well as the desires of our hearts, because we know that nothing is impossible for you. We ask forgiveness for all our sins, and we pray that you will create in us clean hearts and steadfast spirits, that we may be willing to do what you want us to do in your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us here today in our church, as well as for our brothers and sisters who worship with us online. We call unto you to guide our worship today. Open our hearts and minds that we may understand the message today. Bless our speaker, our choir, and everyone who will take part in making this worship holy and acceptable to you. As we start this service, may your holy name be glorified from beginning to end. As we celebrate Mission Sunday today, may we be reminded, Lord, that the harvest are plentiful, but the laborers are few. We pray that the Holy Spirit will grant us courage and wisdom to share the good news to everyone, especially to those who've never heard your holy name, your graciousness, your love, and your mercy, and the promise of salvation and eternal life. May you continue to convict us, especially our church leaders, workers, volunteers, and missionaries to be more zealous and eager to serve you. We pray, O Lord Jesus Christ, that this church will produce a great force of laborers who will jo joyfully follow and serve you in the most significant way. This is our prayer in our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who are in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as this in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. congregation may be seated in Proverbs 28 13 the Bible says whoever conceals their sins does not prosper but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy at this moment let us confess before God and ask for his forgiveness for all the sins and mistakes that we have committed against him and against our fellow human being. Let's do that in a brief silence.
Paul in his letter to the Christians in Ephesus he said be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you it is the love of God in Christ that forgiveness is made possible that entrance to heaven is made available and it is such love in Christ that grace is extended to all of us in Jesus we are forgiven thanks be to God Let us pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, we celebrate, Lord, such love that you have extended to all humanity, that even if we are not worthy, even if from your own eyes and perspective we are separated from you because of disobedience and sin, we are supposedly suffering from your wrath and judgment and with punishment Lord but because of your love so much love you extended for us an opportunity to be reconciled an opportunity to be part once again of your kingdom being your sons and daughters an opportunity to be your children to be disciples of Jesus Christ someone who is experiencing a life that is dwelt by the Holy Spirit, filled by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, which gives us, Lord, so much reason to worship you, to thank you, to lift your name on high and acknowledge your holy presence in our midst. Oh, Father, we are thankful for a lot of things. You allowed our naked eyes to witness your goodness. You allowed our lives to experience your, your grace lavishly. And you allowed us, O oh Lord, to be victorious in many times. We may not be able to mention all those victories that you have allowed us to experience and receive and the blessings, O oh Lord. But Father, at this moment, what we have is to worship, to honor, and bring praises and thanksgiving to your name. With that, O oh Lord, you are giving us access, confidence, and freedom to come to you, knowing that you are our Abba Father, who listens to all where one or two are gathered in the name of Jesus. All our requests are heard in your throne. Thus, at this very moment, O oh Lord, we bring into your attention our requests and supplication, Father, 
especially as we go into the outreaches, the church planting areas in Buhangin and New Carmen and Los Amigos, in Tibar, Bukana, in Punta Dumalag, even in Bangkirohan, Lord, as we open the BCS 2023. May this week indeed with the volunteers who are offering their lives become an opportunity for kids and for the community to once again reiterate your goodness, you being the great creator bigger than our problem, you being our loving father who came in Jesus, you who dwell to those who believe as the Holy Spirit. O Abba, Father, bless our volunteers as they go to the mission field and bring good news that people as they hear will receive and confess that Jesus indeed is their Savior too. Praying even, Father, as we launch by next week the prolegomena, the teacher's training, where we are dreaming and looking forward of laying the second layer foundation of our institute in this church so that we'll be able to equip more ministry multipliers addressing the need of our own community and eventually mobilizing this church into addressing the immediate community of Dabao City. Looking forward, Lord, as to how you equip people with our partnership with Dr. Willis and Dr. Esme Newman. May the launching of the teacher's training, the associate degree, indeed be blessed by you, filled by your grace, and become an avenue, Lord, for equipping, nurturing, multiplying the capability of this church in addressing our local need. Father, there are a lot of things we'd like to bring into your attention, especially for the whole mission month that we celebrate. We put emphasis on the mission. We, we refresh ourselves, O oh Lord, with your calling, your invitation, making all of us your children, so that when we become your children, we are being sent off to communities as child of yours bringing good news. So the month of August, Lord, is a time for us to refresh, a time for us to be renewed, to be revived in doing the first love of your church. Lord our God, we have witnessed how you have faithfully filled our pockets our treasury, our resources as individual. You have been our great provider in our individual families. And Lord, with the presence of the Holy Spirit, each of us are empowered to also be faithful to you, especially, Lord, as we bring one step forward the ministry of the church by bringing in the resources, financing it, providing warm bodies, giving our time to you. So we as a church are able to bring one step or more steps forward the mission and the ministry of your body, the church, the crossroads in particular. Lord, we are thankful for the resources and persons that you are mobilizing for the back to school program, now we are ready to extend such ministry to the targeted community and children in Lumondao. May they be blessed. Father, may that opportunity for children to receive blessing, they may also receive Jesus as their Lord and start their special journey with you. Even with just giving a material, it becomes an opportunity, Lord, for them to stand and learn Jesus. We even remember praying, Lord, for the surgical mission team of social concerns 
whom we recently sent off to Hulu. It is a challenge to go there. It is also an opportunity, Lord, to send a small group to do the mission with their lives, with their time, with the resources. May we, O oh Lord, as a community, extend blessing as we ask you to extend your blessing and grace, your protection, your mercy to be upon them as they do mission daily until they come on Friday safe and sound. Father in heaven, we remember praying, Lord, for a lot of things. Remembering especially praying for brothers and sisters or requesting for healing. Requesting, Lord, for recuperation, for strength, for recovery. We especially bring in your attention our elder. Elder Rector in Tindato who is still in Brokenshire. Especially pray for Elder Dailin Magpayo who was just discharged and looking for a possible fast recovery. We even mentioned in our prayers the mother of Elder Charity, Mrs. Labores, who was admitted just today at this PMC. Father, we ask and we remember your promise. You said in your word where two or three are gathered in your name. Our requests, our supplications are heard and granted in Jesus' name. We celebrate, Lord, with our brothers and sisters who are right now celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries today and this week, that as in their celebration, you are at the center, that in their fellowship and the sharing of Thanksgiving meal, that you are, Lord, recognized the source of everything, the source of strength, the source of their inspiration, the source of the reason for their being. And Lord, may they continue to celebrate your goodness in their lives. As a community of faith, we remember praying, Lord, for our question that was filed years ago in the civil court. Question searching for an answer, especially on the regularities that was done by the national leaders on that day on the constitution and bylaws of the church and its effect and its impact, O oh Lord, is not just felt, but it's being seen already in the hospital ministry of the church, particularly in Bethany, in the community hospital in Visayas, and in Brokenshire. Lord, this is a sad moment, but this is also an opportunity to come to you with all our hearts humbled, recognizing that it is in you through the powers and the wisdom that you are granting through the civil court, Lord, we may be able to find answer. We may be able to find resolution. We're not filing it to create chaos. We are filing a question to find solution so that your ministry, your body, the church, is strengthened and we stand firm, faithful to your call for us as your children, to your call for us to be faithful stewards of all the properties that you have entrusted to the church. Father, on Tuesday, the first hearing will be done in one of the courts here in Davao. We ask that your wisdom, your kingdom, your authority be upon that hall where both sides will be gathered and that your reign indeed is experienced by all. 
Abba Father, at this moment, we pray for wisdom for Pastor Edith as she proclaims your word and that all our hearts and minds are ready to hear and receive and be renewed. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand for the reading of the scriptures. It's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12, and in Galatians 3, 26. Yet to all who, who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. The Lord bless us as we meditate on these words. You may now be seated. Thank you. 
Indeed, we are God's people. We are the children of grace. We are the chosen of the Lord. Good morning, children of God. In this world that is so uncertain and unstable, how blessed we are to have the privilege to anchor ourselves in the unshakable foundation of our faith. Is your foundation unshakable? Kung doon na ba yung mga pagsulay, di dayon matarog, ligon, kaayong, uh, mutindog? Today, we are on the fourth set of five on the 33 Positional Truth in Christ by Dr. Arnold Frochtenbaum. So first, there's nothing more secure a position than being a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people. The 16th Positional Truth is more true of Jewish believers, mga Hudiyo, than of Gentile believers, Kita, according to 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen people. He was referring to the believers of Israel or the Jewish believers. It should be kept in mind that Peter did not write to the church as a whole, but he wrote specifically to Jewish believers. Because the church is not a chosen generation, It is comprised of people of all generations. Lahit-lahitag generation. Nga ni Adinhi karon. The church is not a holy nation. So di po ta balaan nga nasod. Because we are comprised of people from all nations. Tanan nga mga magtutuo sa tibuo kalibutan. Dili lang mga Pilipino. The church is not a peculiar, singular people. It is comprised of members from all peoples, tribes, and tongues. So according to First Fruits Zion staff writer, the Jews being a peculiar, a, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, means that They were chosen from before the foundation of the earth to be God's own possession. So what pa ang kalibutan, they have already been chosen by God. And they belong exclusively to God. They are God's special people. There are still a number of Jews today who do not believe in Jesus as the Messiah but religiously observe Jewish holidays. No? Di yun nila miss ng mga Passover feast, kanang mga Sukkoth, and all other harvest festival and many others. For them, it is cultural to pray to God. It's only their culture para nga mo pray sa ginoo. So they pray to God they do not believe in. And it is also cultural to go to the synagogue to study the Bible. There are even rabbis or teachers who do not believe in God, yet they teach about His mercy, about His greatness, about the wonders that He has performed every week of their lives. So keeping in mind that Peter wrote specifically to Jewish believers, This particular position means that Jewish believers are the chosen generation. They are the holy nation. They are the peculiar people. The point that Peter makes in context is, whereas the nation of Israel as a whole failed to fulfill its calling in Exodus 19, the remnant of Israel, the Jewish believers, katong mga magtutuo, nagtuo kang Jesus as Messiah, nga mga Hudiyo, within the nation known as Israel of God have fulfilled their calling. Only a few of them have fulfilled the, their calling. So they are the chosen generation, the holy nation, and the peculiar people. So even when there, there is still a lot of percentage who do, that, that, who do not believe 
in Jesus as the Savior or the Messiah. And yet, that doesn't change their being a chosen generation. That doesn't change their being a holy nation and a peculiar people. That makes them even a peculiar people. Bisagwa sila ng sa ginoo, yet they come come to the synagogue, they come to church, they come to the temple. So by way of application, this position is for the purpose of doing good works according to Titus 2.14, who have himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. The second thing, the second blessing that every believer receive from God when we, be, when we believe in him is that being, they are given, they are approved being citizens of heaven. We know that there are a lot, even our relatives or a fr a friends, our friends who are abroad waiting for their green card, waiting for their citizenship in Canada, in America, or wherever. And know that we as believers of God are also not just a Filipino citizen, but we are also citizens of heaven. A citizen is a person who legally belongs to a country and has the rights and protection of that country. So because we are citizens of the Philippines, we, are, we have the rights and we are also protected by our country. Citizens adapt the culture and practices of the nation to which they belong. We are born into the kingdom of this world in which Satan rules and adapt the culture. So naman tas kalibutan, si Satanas maumay taga kalibutan, we also adapt the the culture of the world, the practices and values that Satan brings. But when we are born again by faith in Jesus Christ, we are born into the kingdom of heaven. So the 17th position is that the believer's citizenship is now in heaven. Ephesians 2.19 says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Are we not blessed that we are citizens of heaven? Are you not happy that you are already made citizens of heaven by God? Ang imong application, ang imong application is to signify yourself a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are given the green card to heaven. You are given the citizenship of heaven. Philippians 3.20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. When God grants, uh, grants us citizenship in the kingdom of heaven, we become new creatures in 2 Corinthians 5.17. He sent his Holy Spirit to indwell our spirit and our bodies become his temple. So the Holy Spirit begins to transform our sinful worldly desires into those that glorify God. Na ay transformation, na ay kausaban diha sa kinabuhi. And the practical application of having citizenship in heaven is that we keep our mind on heavenly things, not on earthly things. So life is short in these physical bodies. Mubo rakain kinabuhi. And we anticipate that blessed future we have in heaven, looking forward to the city with the foundations whose architect and builder is God. The third is that as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not only made a citizen of heaven, but you are also in the family of God. The eighth position is that the believer is now a part of God's household, part of God's building. The Bible teaches that Jesus Christ and the Father are one, 
and that he is the only begotten son, that Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. This familial term indicates that God regards Jesus as a family member. So born again believers, kita nga mga, nag, mga Gentiles who embrace Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, nagtuo sa iya, hanid dawat niya nga atong ginuog manluluwas, are members of this family. So Ephesians 2, 19-20 says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of this household, built on the foundation of the apostle and prophets, apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So we can, we can do anything to deserve it to deserve becoming, uh, becoming a part in the family of God. For it is God's gift of love. It is God's gift of mercy. And God's grace to us. Yet we are called to become sons and daughters of the living God, according to Romans 9, 25 to 26. Di ba pagkalami sa pagbati nga apilta diha sa pamilya sa Dios and the fourth is that not only are we citizens of heaven and members in the family of God but we are also adopted to sonship adoption is number four it means that the believer has been adopted as a child of God we know how how long and very complicated ka ng mga process of adoption di ba? to become a child to become a legal child of a family to adopt someone is to make that person a legal son or daughter adoption is one of the metaphors used in the Bible to explain how Christians are brought into the family of God Jesus came that we might receive adoption to sonship because of Jesus Christ and His coming to us, we receive adoption to sonship, according to Galatians 4 5. There was a child who was always a subject of bullying in school because he was adopted. In nun siya permi sa mga classmates, adopted, adopted. Di ba na asigur makarelate nato, labi naglahi tag na sa atong mga igsuon or guapa ta kaysa atong igsoon or guapo or mas puti or mas lagom ing nundayon nga adapted man siguro ka no? so kato siyang bata asigig awayon sa skwelahan adapted and one time nitubag ang maong bata and he said yes I am adapted I know that but don't you know that your parents got how, uh, that their, your parents have what they got but my parents choose to love me my parents choose to have me as their legal child even when gikan ko sa laing kanang the the son after uh, from another mother no so bisag di ko ilahang anak they choose to love me and they choose to make me their legal child so, so kadaad to, nakapamalandong pod ang baong bata nga, uy, blessed man pod yun di ay ko, kay anak yun ko sa akong ginikanan. Siya blessed pod kay gi-adapt siya sa usaka mapinanggaon nga kopol. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. So this means that before we were slaves, we were strangers. Strangers, tanghero ta, diha sa ginoo. But God, because of his, the richness of his grace, adopted us as his very own children. Di ba pagkadakong pribilihyo, pagkadakong kalipay nato, that even with our frailties, frailties even with our weaknesses, even with our sins, 
God chose to adopt us as his very own children. So the advantage of being adopted is that while natural children are in the family because they were born to, into it, adopted children are chosen to be loved. Being the adopted children of God means that God has chosen to love each of us. So when we come to faith in Christ, when we were adopted by God into his great family, our debts are, are canceled. We are given a new name. No? Kay di ba ang i-adopt i-adopt man pud niya ang apelyido sa family nga nag-adopt sa iya ha. So because we are adopted by God, the Father, our heavenly Father, we are now ang ato pud i-change na pud ang atong name na mahimo na pud tang iyang mga anak. And we are given all the rights that heirs of God possess. So God adopts people who are completely unworthy. We are all unworthy. We are all undeserving. But because he adopts us, but he adopts us just the same. And the basis of his adoption of us is his grace. So believers have been born again into God's family and adopted into God's family. So we will be forever part of God's family as adopted children. Adoption to sonship. The fifth or the twentieth is a follow-up from the previous position. Because he has been adopted, the believer is now a child of God. According to 1 John 3.10, this explains what it means to be a child of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. So, kulba ni kinsa ka nato ane, ang children of God or children of the devil. Ingundiri, anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Klaro kayo ang bala ang kasulatan ng ang mga anak sa ginoo maokad tong nagbuhat ug matarong ug naghigugma sa iyahang igsuon or isig kaingon atong pangutanon atong kaugalingon do i love my brother do i love my sister do i love my brothers and sisters in the church do i love people at work do i love people at home do I love people around me in the community where I live? So kung wa pa nato higugma atong igsuon, sugod so tagampo. Pangayoon nato sa ginoo that we will truly love our brothers. Namang yung usahay, mag-away, mangyuntas tong mga igsuon. Mag-away, mangyunta, maglalis, mangyunta. But that should not be forever. That should only be temporary inig magkita ta migo tag usab magbalik ta maguli ta kay hadlo kayo ang tinuod di ay nga anak sa Ginoo mao kadtong nahigugma o nagbuhat og matarong og nahigugma sa iyang igsuon og isig kaingon so we ha God has a desire to live a child of God has a desire to live in a way that pleases the Heavenly Father and lead a life that, character, that is characterized by love. As John 1.12 says, Yet to all who be, did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And to be a child of God means that our old sin nature is replaced with the nature that wants to please the Lord. We still sin, pinuod na, but we have an ad advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Being a child of God means that our sins are paid for and our fellowship with God has been restored. Our fellowship with one another will also be restored. So being children of God means that we have the access to the throne of grace through prayer 
anytime and from any place, bisag asa ta, pwede ra yun tang muhunghong o gampo or kinsay atong gustong ampuan. We have the promise that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The child of God trusts his Father to supply his all his needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He is confident that the Father in heaven will give good gifts to those who ask him. And this being children of God means that we are begotten, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins, that we have been quickened or made alive by God. We are made spiritually alive in Jesus Christ. Another thing is that it means that believers are now sons of God or sons or followers according to uh, Hebrew word Benai Berith, it means the sons of the covenant or the followers of the covenant. So, according to 2 Corinthians 6.18, it says, And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That puts a smile in our face to be assured that we are sons and daughters of the, old, of the Lord Almighty. Because you are his sons, God sent the Father of God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. And Becoming a child of God is that the believer is now a new creation. The believer has been created anew to become a child of God. So a child of God is no longer a child of the devil and no longer placed in the devil's backyard. Matud pa sa devotion, knowing Jesus. A child of God is no longer a child of the devil and no longer placed in the devil's backyard. God sent, sets about transforming his children through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they begin to take on a family resemblance. Mahisama na ta sa ginoo. Sa iyang kasing-kasing, sa iyang paghuna-huna, sa iyang pagbati, sa iyang pagbuhat. And if we begin to look like our Heavenly Father in word, in desire, and action, we are most likely really his own children. Therefore, brothers and sisters in the Lord, in Christ we are placed in the most secure position. For the Jews to be a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And for us Gentiles, for us children of God in this church, sinners saved by grace, there is nothing more secure than to be granted citizenship in heaven. Humana, aprobado na. You are already citizens of heaven. According to Johnny Erickson Tada, when a Christian realizes that his citizenship is in heaven, he begins acting as responsible citizen of earth. So because we realize that we are children of God, we become we are citizens of heaven we are also uh, responsible citizens of earth may mo tang responsabling mga kristohanon that we can tr truly shine the light will be shining will keep on shining for god's glory and it is most reassuring to be in the family of god it is such a blessed privilege to be adopted to be made legal sons and daughters of a heavenly father, our Abba Father. And it is such a joy to feel secure as God's very own children. So remember these truths, these are open to all of you, to all of us, to all believers here and everywhere. But few appropriate them or only a few enjoy these blessings we receive as Christians as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The majority remain paupers 
yun pa sa devo devotion knowing Jesus the majority remain paupers when the riches of heaven are in their grasp makabot ragyud nato ang grasya sa ginoo but we remain pobre in experiencing the grace of God because wa rapud ta nag nang diskubre wa rapud nato ito uhi no so we have to believe it and claim it and by God's grace we will enjoy abundant life in him did he not promise i came to give you life a life that is abundant so seek him with all your heart to secure them into the depths of our very being in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith of him and as galatians 3:26 says so in christ jesus you are all children of god through faith the lord bless all of us and may we live a life of christ this week in our workplace in our homes wherever we are magbuhat og matarong higugmaon ang atong igsuon og isig kaingon be a blessing children of god amen This table of the Lord is being prepared for all of us. As a reminder that in Christ Jesus, we are in a secured position and we have become God's children and God's people. Let us prepare as we sing our hymn. We remember the Lord. The night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it. Give it to his disciples and said, This bread is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And said, this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you that you made us all your people and children and citizens of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. A secured position we have in Christ the moment we believe and receive you and unto eternity. We thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate that great redemption through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. 
as you have taught your disciples and as you have demonstrated it by giving your whole body and life, even your body and blood. And the crucifixion of the cross for the forgiveness of sins and your resurrection from the grave and assurance of your power over grave and death. Thank you, Lord, that we celebrate once again your living presence in our means as we know that you are our Lord living in our lives and that by that secured position, you want us all to celebrate as one family and one body the salvation we have in Christ Jesus. Lord, thank you that you will make us worthy and you prepare our hearts and minds as we come that we may receive once again, Lord, the nourishment for our body and spirit that comes from you and you alone. Through Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus, even of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, we now give you this bread. And we give you this cup so that we can celebrate Christ's death and resurrection and anticipate his coming again, that we may be as one family, come to the Lord and serve him. Isaiah 6, verse 6 to 9. Then one of the seraphs flew to one to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken out with tongues in from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and your sins atoned for. Then I heard a voice from the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. He said, Go and tell these people. We eat and drink in remembrance of our Lord. Remember that we are made God's children because God wants us to respond to his call to be sent and to go in his name. In this table we receive the strength and power and wisdom of God that we may go and tell God's people of his loving grace and redemption for the world. The Lord bless you all. Amen.
Jeremiah chapter 1 nine following Then the word of the Lord when the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me Now I have put my words into your mouth See today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant let us eat and drink in remembrance of our lord jesus celebrate the redemption we have in christ jesus through his death and resurrection remember that we are made god's children for we are appointed to go over nations and kingdoms to share the gospel of salvation to all people My dear friends, you stand up and walk in the name of our Lord Jesus. The blessing of God and His empowerment and anointing be upon you all. Amen. Matthew chapter 9 verse 30 When Jesus saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd Then he said to the disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few Ask the Lord the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field let us eat and drink in remembrance of our god remember the lord has chosen us to be his special people that we may be like him that compassion on the people who are helpless and harassed that we may become workers in the vineyard for the harvest is plentiful my dear friends The Lord has already blessed you, redeemed you, and His blessing is upon you as you stand up now and walk to share the love of God to the world. Amen.
Then Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We eat and drink in remembrance of our Lord. For in this table we receive the assurance that we are children of God, become his children and people, that we are commissioned, commissioned to go to the nations of the world to share his love and his saving grace for everyone. The Lord already blessed you. Stand up and walk and share the love of God to the world. Amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they meet together, they ask the Lord, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times and the dates the Father had set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We eat and drink in remembrance of our God. We celebrate His loving and redeeming act on the cross and from the grave. For in this table, we receive God's empowerment and anointing that we may go like he had sent his disciples to go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The Lord already bless us. Stand up and walk and tell the world of his love. Amen.
Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse 14, follow it. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on the one they have not heard and believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. Let us eat and drink in remembrance of our God. For in this table we are reminded that we are made by the Lord as His children and people in a secured position that we may call upon Him that when we call upon Him, He will save us that we are also called in His name to go so that someone will hear Him and they have the chance to call upon Him and be saved as well. For how beautiful indeed are the feet of those who bring the good news. My dear friends, in this table, you are blessed by the Lord so that you will be a blessing to others. God's strength and power be upon you as you go in His name. The blessing of God be with you. Amen. Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with his spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us before the foundation of the world to be holy, blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be adopted to be sons and daughters through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the grace of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We eat and drink in remembrance of our Lord and be reminded of the spiritual blessings we have in Christ Jesus that we may proclaim the glorious riches of Christ to the whole world. Stand up and walk and share the love of God to God's people, to the world. The Lord bless you. Amen. Apostle Paul said, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the standard pattern of the world, but be transformed the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able 
to test and approve what God's will is, good, pleasing, and perfect will. We eat and drink in remembrance of our God as we continue to offer our lives to Him for service, for work, for witness and worship as the Lord has used us in many ways in serving Him. The Lord already blessed you. Stand up and walk and share the love of God to the world. Amen. Thank you, loving Father, for lavishly loving us, Lord, that we may experience the redemption and the spiritual blessings we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that as one body of Christ redeemed by the Lord, we are also blessed that we may become a blessing to the whole world, that we may go and tell the world your great love and your saving grace through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the nourishment for our spirit and body that we may be strengthened, Lord, to face life and in the service of your name continue to do your will and purpose. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. In Malachi 3, then it says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing, until, it, until there is no more need. Let us now offer our lives, pledges, and other offerings. Sing a 
of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. of God Your goodness is running after is running after me Your goodness is running after it's running after me With my life laid down and surrendered now I give you everything Your goodness is running after it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. I bleed down and surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so Let's pray. Father, thank you for your unending grace in our lives. And unworthy as we are, yet with your great love and mercy, you have given us far more than we prayed for. Bless, please bless these offerings we offer you today. May this be used 
in your kingdom and your glory. This is our thanksgiving in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Rejoice, people of God, for in Christ we are no longer insecure, but placed in the most secure position of being a chosen people, citizens of heaven, into the family of God, and the privilege of receiving adoption to sonship, and being made as children of God, sons and daughters of our Abba Father. Let us keep doing what is right, what is good, and keep loving our brothers and sisters, for indeed we will be known as children of God. Let us now commit ourselves to God Almighty as we sing our hymn of proclamation, Now I Belong to Jesus. Yes, Father in heaven, we are so joyful, Lord, and thankful for making us, Lord, your very own children, and that now we belong to you, not only for years, but for eternity. We thank you, Father in heaven, for the many privileges, Lord, for the many blessings, the many favors, Lord, that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that through him, we are placed in the most secure position of being your chosen people, citizens of heaven, brought into the, your family, adopted as your sons and daughters, made children of God. Thank you, Father in heaven for making us no longer slaves or strangers, 
but your very own children. And thank you for giving us the challenge, Lord, for us to live out, live up to being your children. Here are your children, O God, coming before you in humility and in gratitude for all that you have done in our lives. For all this, your children standing before you and kneeling with their prayers and petitions. Thank you, Father in heaven, for inclining your ears, Lord, upon our prayers. And thank you for all your grace, your mercy, and your love. Thank you for all the answer to our prayers. Thank you for the peace that passes all understanding, for all your grace that sustained us, and your wisdom and strength, Lord, that have carried us through all the phases of life. Thank you for dismissing us from this sanctuary into the world, bringing your joy and peace and love. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.